Examine door. The door is locked. You knock, but no one answers. This seems to be an Alternian neighborhood. Aside from all the violence, Alternian culture seems like it must have been pretty similar to life on before us, lawn rings and all. Then again, as a spoiled runaway princess, you never did spend much time in the burbs, so what do you know? Examine bin. An ordinary domestic dross coffer. It's full of smelly garbage, but it hasn't been dragged outside the ring yet. Maybe the waste collection drone isn't scheduled to make a pickup tonight? Examine hose. No self-respecting Alternian troll kid would dare keep a dry, unwatered lawn ring. Letting the grass outside your hive turn yellow is just begging to get yourself cold. Harsh, but fair, you think. God, life on Alternia was so great. Examine eyes in bushes. Better leave it alone. Might have the troll rabies. Open chest. You got an Alternian soft drink. You're not really up on Alternian history, but apparently at some point the Empress got fed up with the subjugulator's stranglehold on the soda market and released a drink that was said to be more loaded with sugar than even the wicked elixir itself. The high bloods considered such marketing reports to be blasphemous lies, however. And they were right. The beverage actually contained zero calories, which she secretly mandated so as to preserve her slim figure. But all the low-blood suckers guzzled cans down by the billions none the wiser, while the crafty condes raked in the cash. If someone actually told you this story, you'd spend the next ten minutes fangirling on the floor. Examine Seahorse Lucis. The hovering maritime stallion issues a stern, fatherly neigh. Seahorse Dad. Well, 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 mm. Globes. What? Huh? I saw you walk in my way, and I had this smooth line all ready to go. But for some reason, I decided to open it with a tongue twister. Very nice, Ampera, starting your killer line with three consecutive W words in a row. Ws are hard. They're hard and no one understands. These two. What, uh, was your killer pickup line going to be? Or should I ask? No. <sighs> never even mind. It's so ruined now. Just never even. I just saw you strutting in my direction with all of your impressive moxie and confidence for the first time in... how long? And I got a little excited. I was going to blow you out of the water with that line, but, uh, I guess nothing's changed. Guess not. Sounds like you're still the bard of tries too hard. Oh, nice. You always knew how to twist the fork. Actually, all you girls are quite adept at twisting your respective utensils. Utensil kind. The guys, too, now that I think about it. Uh, can I ask you a question? Why do all you pretentious scenester types enjoy being so cruel to especially sensitive and artistic people? So, I take it, even after a billion sweeps here with a boatload of eligible spook shorties to mac on, you still never got any action. First you twist the fork, then you use it to pry into my personal life? That's really just what's fell of you, Mina. Without commenting specifically on that, because seriously, what? So rude. I will say that it gets very frustrating after the first few epics, trying to make heads or tails of what people are even looking for. I mean, in any quadrant. Now, please don't tell anyone I said so, but you and I both know pretty much all these people should feel honored to go out for the guy like me. What being royalty and all, and not even slightly put off by dating down on the spectrum? <laughs> I mean, really. How much more evident can I make it to everyone that I'm really a cool, progressive, easygoing dude? Who doesn't take the social order seriously or buy into any of the stereotypes? First of all, as if the Hebo Spectrum scene isn't beyond played out, you should be sticking your fork in that. I barely ever even bring up my high social status. It couldn't be less of a big deal to me, but I think people maybe are still intimidated by it. 
They're probably putting me on a pedestal, in spite of all my easygoing assurances that my royal lineage is something I never even think about. Like, no friend. I am just like you. If we laugh at the same jokes, listen to... Well, to some extent, the same music. I at least used to listen to music you like. Does that count? All these cats and kittens, I'm telling you. They're always drawn to the freaks and the rejects. You have to be broken in some way to get a little concupiscent attention. Cats. Kittens. Freaks. Rejects. Broken. They never seem to give the time of day to a guy who's sensitive and listens to people and sticks to his poetry and music and... I guess... just someone who tries to be there for them. Sensitive. Listens. Poetry. Music. There for them. However, the bright side of my various rejections is that it has helped me craft a private list of people who are objectively fucking terrible, which I'd be happy to share with... Mina? Where'd you go? Ah, oh, crud. She fucked a fave while I was saying stuff. I really blew that one in record time. Gonna make this quick. And this ain't like a diving board for you to launch off about your feelings and romp robs. Just give me a straight answer. I'm getting a posse together to kill an invincible monster. You want in? Yes or no? YOLO. Even though you can die twice? Whatever. Whoa! Nice! I just got here and you're already going diabolical. That's the tops. I'd love to help. You know how I love to help out and be there for attractive people. It's kind of my thing. But... Ugh, here we go. Mina, I just don't think I'm in that kind of space now in my life. Or, afterlife, I mean. What space? An aggressive space. I've been trying to cool it, be more introspective. I search my feelings, work on my music. Grease my hair. I don't think I'd be much good in a fight. I've been trying to get in touch with who, or I guess what I really am, and... I think I've been making some nice breakthroughs. I'm telling you this in confidence, but I think I'm approaching a kind of awakening, especially since I first started learning about humans. I think I actually might be- Nope. Nope, 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 nope! Uh-uh. Stop saying whatever that was. Do not care. You're right. I shouldn't burden you with my problem. Forget I said anything. I wouldn't want to compromise our friendship, not even to speak of the potential for us to develop into something more than just friends. By which I mean two people who freely engage in sexual intercourse. Oh, right! You asked me how my music was going these days, didn't you? No. It's going pretty nicely, I think. I've been messing with dual sawtooth waveforms. I think I really could be hitting on my signature sound. If not my signature shape, at the very least. Here, listen to this track. I wrote it in anticipation of your arrival. Not clicking that. Um, I, I, I see. Then, uh, what about... I probably shouldn't have shown you those. Okay, uh, hold on. Uh, I know I have something here you'll dig.
So that was a no to my invite then. Which got rescinded halfway through this convo anyways. Time to jet before you sketch me out some more crow times. Oh, the Vantus look alike? Yeah, he came by this way. I tried to start a friendly conversation with him, but he just flipped me off and locked himself in that hive up there. Barely even had the chance to hit on him. So rude. It looks like he conjured the memory of some sort of complicated puzzle door from some ancient ruins. I tried to open it, but it looks totally impossible. The kid sure knows how to give the guy a cold shoulder. What do you want with him, anyway? Nothing. Bye. Oh, I see how it is. Bonus gets the shaft while you scurry away to flirt with some infants out loud mouth. Why am I not surprised? Guess I'm neither mentally unstable or a big enough asshole to catch your eye. Huh, it's no big deal. I'll just record my feelings on the subject through a bit of slam poetry and bubble my sorrows throughout the... And... Yep. Looks like I'm talking to myself again. He's gone. B. Cronus. Oh no, there's not a snowbubble's chance in monster hell you're being this guy. You got a diamond key! Examine Grub. What? Some careless soul has left this poor infant grub all alone to fend for itself. So, in other words, just like all grubs in Alternia. Big whoop. You got a claw sickle! You absolutely love this due to its nautical nature. Also, hoarding items such as this will nicely complement your increasingly manic obsession with Car Cat. So, there's that too. You got a whole bunch of Sea Dweller bling. It's pretty obvious this all belongs to Cronus over there. He's just not wearing it right now so he can convince everyone he doesn't feel like his royalty status is a big deal, even though he does. You have no problem whatsoever selling this shit to the highest bidder, though. You pocket the gaudy loot while giggling. Examine door. Bang, bang, bang! Is anybody home? You say. But of course no one is, because most of these hives are just memory projections. You got Ahab's crosshairs! You raise this awesome legendary weapon to the heavens and watch it sparkle a bit. Just before you bring it down on your knee and snap it in half, while laughing maniacally. You hear a muffled sob from Ampora's direction. Examine Prospidians. Is it? Could it be? It is! It's Problem Sleuth, Ace Dick, and Pickle Inspector in their original Prospidian attire! You knew it! You knew you would find them eventually! Oh, it's so great to meet. Wait. This is not Problem Sleuth, Ace Dick, and Pickle Inspector. These are just some random Prospidians who are similarly proportioned. Proportion Prospidians. Dot, 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 dot. You're beginning to think you'll never run into them. You got Game Grub Magazine! This publication is absolutely dripping with exclusive grub leaks. Actually, it's a pretty disgusting magazine. Talk to me, Tuna. Hey, bro. Pretty nice stunt there. I offered a high five, but you sort of missed. By about ten feet. What? Uh, it's cool, G. Don't wig out. Just take a rain check on it. More hand slaps where that came from, you know? No! Let's do things! Down again! 
Uh, no. Seriously. Forget the high five. I don't want to be responsible for you hurting yourself. Go for your duck. Dude, you are foul and unpleasant as ever. Thought dying might have took the edge off, but guess not. Kid, my chagrin tuckle, you skank ass chum bucket! Man, why you gotta hate? And listen, bro, you better watch it with those slurs. Or tag them, at least. Unless you want Cancre to give you the biz. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll keep this quick. Come right out and ask. You ever get God Tier Tuna Boy? What? No. Maybe. I. I. I mean. I. I don't. Don't. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Look. Take off your red shirt, deal, and let me see if you got wings. <laughs> yes. Thought you never had. Bitches. Come around to my willy, the mother fox! Willy, mother fox! Wait, help! Uh, help! How do I take off my clothes again? Yeah, keep your shirt on. You made that exchange beyond awful. I'm sorry. You know of anyone else who might be God tier in secret? No, but. I could organize a bubble watch strip search. Starting with you! <laughs> Boom, yeah! You are the worst. Ask me, Tuna, to join. Hey, Tuna, you want to help me go kill? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even finish this question while staying serious. No, but what I do want is to maintain precarious but mostly sustained on my tight ass Faldo flat. Maybe grind down some shit. Sports. What will you grind on? I volunteer that thing to be you! Gross, bro. Don't know how Latula even deals. Uh, I'm sorry. But also... Fuck you and your fucking crumpy, fucky, fuck, fuck, humping brine stem right up your shifty, flood soaked prostitute till it suck ass bitches and sucky, sucky, fuckity, fuck, 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 fuck! Holy mackerel. Them was sick fires, mostly. At least, the parts that were actual words. Hey, isn't the afterlife supposed to heal people, or...? I don't understand. Why is it the pyrope still can't smell? Then you still got horrible brain problems. Don't tell me Lijan's still deaf. I give up on figuring out the existential mysteries. Waiter. Hey, fuck you! I feel I should jump in here at this moment before this escalates any further and we start throwing around hateful rhetoric that we can't take back. Ah, uh, shall now. Matuna, I know you often struggle with this, but you just used an extremely derogatory and hurtful caste-specific slur, which, as you probably know, is once commonly used to disparage sea-dwelling members of our society or land-dwelling castes who are especially complicit in furthering the oppressive fuchsia down power structure. Now, we all need to realize that Royal Vs and those rare few who are even higher, such as Mina, as members of the aristocracy, enjoy a tremendous position of privilege over others, and therefore we cannot view such verbal transgressions against them as equivalent to those targeting the underprivileged. But, it needs to be pointed out that such radioactive language is absolutely the worst kind of well-poisoning, which is nothing but counterproductive when others are trying to pursue an honest dialogue about critically important social problems. Slurs. Hurtful. Struggle. Radioactive. Well-poisoning. Counterproductive. Problems. And Mina, while I can understand your frustration over being verbally assaulted under any circumstance, it is incumbent on me to remind you that Matuna requires a certain amount of special consideration, and more than a little patience. Please try to resist taking his bait, which I'm guessing is mostly well-intended. 
before its contentious undertow pulls you even further into an exchange laden with deeply problematic expressions of ableism, ableist slurs, and other such manifestations of unconscionably unchecked ability privilege. Ableism. Ability privilege. Bait. Undertow. Are the aquatic terms helping? Vantus, what the actual fuck are you doing here? How are you even in this chat, yo? You aren't even remotely in the same corporeal vicinity as us. Like, I literally do not understand how you just jumped into the conversation like that. Can you maybe get lost? Make like a clam and scray. On the other hand, if I'm being honest, I found Matuna's entire existence to be a pretty problematic impediment to the advancement and overall awareness of ableism and its painful manifold consequences for unabilityed persons. The speech impediment, frankly, I could do without, and I'm by no means ecstatic over his torrential bigotry and hostility. On the one hand, I want to be sensitive to him as a person and as a friend, but on the other, what kind of message does his behavior send? And frankly, I'm not crazy about the helmet either. What's wrong with my helmet? Nothing, friend. It's a really cool helmet, and it's a good look for you. But are we now to assume that all those who are stricken with your particular disadvantage will be similarly prone to require such headgear, due to falling down and hitting their heads frequently? But I do fall down and hit my head frequently. Oh, I know you do, and I think you should continue wearing it for your safety, particularly if you continue to insist on floundering about on your dangerous toy. It's more about the unfortunate message you're sending overall. With certain aspects of your personality and existence, that's all. I'm sorry. As a friend, I wouldn't want to change anything about you. Well, not most things. I just think you may not be doing yourself or those who are similarly disadvantaged any favors with... What I'm hoping is a perfectly innocent array of traits and mannerisms. But again, I say this with all due sensitivity. Vantis, you're being a shit. Don't talk about him like that. Anyway, I didn't mean to derail. I'll be on my way. Please, continue your discussion, and try to keep some of the issues I described at length in mind. I hate all of my friends so fucking much. Be me, Tuna. Talk to Mina. Dog, before you even start with your junk, I just want to point out I can barely understand a word you say. I'm sorry. Like, between your caught-awful quirk, and your variety of weird, conflicting speech impediments, and the fact that even aside from all the shitty numbers you stick in words, you're still misspelling half of what you say, I just... GTF you. Give straight the fuck up on you. Uncle Mother Glover. Bitch, why don't you shove my grad injury pedal into your nasty sexual private part of preference! Thank fuck you were never a major player, at least from my personal vantage over the course of this ridiculous huge narrative. Way minor character, yo. Probably would have offed my shelf even schooner if I had to hear you talk much. Really too bad since you got the bestest, fishiest name of anyone. Hmm. Uh, sorry. Examine Bicyclopes Lucis. This custodian really has his hands full taking care of that guy. You kind of feel for the hideous monster. Biclops death. Or at least that's your observation if you're being Mina right now. If you're being my tuna, you beg your enormous parental unit for some mine honey. The huge beast grunts dismissively and bops you on the helmet. You fall on your ass and throw a tantrum. But what if I'm Cronus? Let's not worry about that, okay? Where do you think you're going? This is Mina's interactive quest through the afterlife. You can only leave this area if you're being her. Nice try. You got a club key. Open hidden chest. Can't open it. 
Maybe if you try with someone else. Dr. Cronus. Hey, Chief. Looking good today. Is that a new helmet? No, you fucking... <laughs> Easy there, it was a joke. Of course it's not a new helmet. What, do you think I'm uh, um, uh, short on common sense? No. And did you see Mina go by? No. She fent that way, didn't she? No. Are you sure? No. Listen, mate, I don't mean to call you a liar, but I saw her walk up to you. Liar. No. No. I was spying on both of you from behind the hive over there. I saw you do a seriously groovy faceplant off the railing. No, 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 You're pretty priceless, Captor. Have I ever told you what a cool cat I think you are? Why are you touching me? I really feel like you're one of the only people I can open up to about my feelings. I guess it really does help to confide in someone who basically lacks the ability to repeat what you say with any clarity, or coherence, or even understand what you said in the first place. You're still touching me and I don't understand what is happening! But, truth be told, I always felt that way about you before you even started having, well, your issues. We always had a good thing together, didn't we? I, I don't want your head there. Don't get me wrong, I know you and Lutula are in a very committed matronship, though, let's face facts. She could obviously do better. And I mean, <laughs> much better. Really, she is just in a totally different league. She is charming, gorgeous, whereas you are... Well... You, unfortunately. And I wouldn't dare to intrude on your long-standing warrior allegiance with Kurlaz, and, uh, not because he scares the shit out of me either. That just really seems to work, you and him, doesn't it? I don't get a peep out of him, of course, not even if I'm super nice and compliment his hideous hair. And obviously, I receive nothing but disgusting horseshit out of your mouth every time you open it. But, you seem to bring good qualities out of each other, no? Is it true, the rumor that you were actually lucid when you talked to him instead of behaving like a babbling, vertigo-stricken imbecile? Why would the weird touching stop? But what I'm trying to say is, you don't judge like the others. Well, okay, you do, but I can't really take your vitriol that seriously because you are so obviously reta reticent with your true emotions. Like, for instance, who could I confide in when I began to fully come to terms with this feeling deep inside that I was actually a human born in the body of a troll, but Never realized it until learning about the humans. Nobody. Except you, of course. You don't care that I'm human kin. You don't mock me for it and trivialize my tragic existence. Well, you do. But the point I'm trying to make is that when you mock me, it doesn't actually mean anything because everything you say is such putrid nonsense. Friendship. I want that your hand to not be on my body, please. What? Nah, come on, guy. I'm just giving you a friendly little shoulder massage with one hand, like this. See? In a way that seems very casual, like uh, bros do. Please don't make this more awkward than it needs to be. I'm sorry. I forgive you. Now hold that thought. I'm going to go see if I can go catch up with Mina. Don't follow me, because obviously you're going to cramp my style. Now how does my hair look? Oh, never mind, you don't know what you're talking about. I'll just use your reflective visor to check myself out. Yeah, looking great. Cool scar. Can I come with you? Jeepers, you're a thick-headed fella. I just told you to stay put. I'm gonna try some especially bold moves on Pacey's over there. Really put out the vibe, you dig? I don't think I need to remind you that your presence will be like spraying the area with libido side. Uh, Bephorus to Captor. Hello, this is Mission Control. Is anything getting through that helmet? I am saying that your presence is sexual poison, and if you are drooling nearby while I chat her up, she will become distracted and have trouble picturing me naked. As a Vingman, I must say, you are a true fucking disgrace. True fucking 
disgrace. I'm sorry. Please stop apologizing so much. It's really unattractive. At this point, even I'm not sure if I'd want to sleep with you. Now, before I go, I just need to think of a good way to break the ice. Aha! I've got it! I'll open with some jokes about how hilarious it was when you fell on your face over there and what absolutely incredible fuck-up you are on every level. Thank you for the inspiration, friend. B. Cronus. Talk to me, Tuna. Oh, I almost forgot. I've been working on a song I think you might- Your music is shit and I fucking hate you! Wow. <laughs> fair enough. Really, that's totally fair. Hurtful beyond my ability to capture fifth language, but fair. But seriously, stay here. I'm gonna go work my magic on Pacey's. Not literally, of course, because as I learned through a series of crushing revelations during my adolescence, magic isn't real. Just so over the wizarding scene. Fade here, try not to fall down, and above all, try not to be seen. Open hidden chest. Hey, Eridan, or whatever your name is. I'll go on a date with you. You will? Absolutely. I find you attractive, and your personality is... basically tolerable to me. Um, alright, sure. Guess beggars can't be choosers. Examine Seahorse Lucis. Sorry, bro, I was only using you to get close to your beautiful floating seahorse. Giddy up, seahorse, dad! Up, up, and away! Nye! This is literally the first case scenario for my feelings. Wait, where'd she go? Dang it, looks like she ditched you again. Story of your life. This is probably Captain Helmet's fault. You should go grill him. Grill me, Tuna. Hey! I thought I told you to stay put! What the f- What the f- I told you to stay here in exactly this spot. I did. Well, she was gone! Someone must have frightened her away! It must have spaced out and wandered into view briefly. She probably got one look at you and couldn't split fast enough. No, I stay here like you said. Wonderful. This is just exactly what I needed. What with all my frayed emotions lately. Thanks a lot, buddy. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You're lying. Your vol bifurcated demeanor is such an act. Half the time you're noxious and incomprehensible, and the other half you're mild and contrite. Sure, pal. As if I'm not so onto you. You only pretend to say you're sorry to get girls to like you more. Sure seems like Pyrop's a sucker for the ruse. Like I'm not familiar with those tactics. Who do you think wrote the book on that? I don't know who wrote the book. Be quiet. I really dislike the sound of you. Do you realize because of you, it may be epics before I get another shot with her? You just had to crawl out of the bushes and shit your spacesuit in plain sight. I'm sorry. I said shut up. Do you have any idea of what a man of my class would do if a mustard blood like you spoke to me this way on Alternia? Honestly, sometimes I think I was hatched in the wrong universe, let alone the wrong body. I am so sick of having to pretend to treat you with the dignity you wouldn't deserve, even if you could count the scars on my forehead. You couldn't tell me the answer if I asked what your favorite number was. Two! Don't interrupt. You're a horrible friend and a horrible person. Latula is only with you out of pity. She doesn't have real feelings for you, no one could. 
You were a brain damaged reject on a team full of rejects. A reject's reject. I would have called you myself if that verd meant what it should have on our planet. Ahem. Whoa, uh. Mina! Thou, uh. Hmm. Thou! How long, uh. Were you standing there? Douche. Talk to Mina. Yo, that was some scuzzy repartee there, even for you, Crow Dog. The last thing my feelings need is your harsh judgment. I just can't handle that on top of everything else you've done to me. What the fuck else I done to you? You ignored me. Ugh. This is serious. Please, don't dismiss my emotions like that. Look, I have an especially tortured and confused soul. I really can't afford and any more grief from you. Eh. Eh. I cannot believe you are doing my fish pun thing while you're still trying to hit on me. Eh, worth a shot. Don't ever say a fish thing again or I'll gut you. You know, you're being a bit hypocritical here, don't you think? What? Taking me to task for ripping Captor a sorely deserved new nook? Like you weren't even more guilty of abusing the poor fella. You're such a glubbin liar. <laughs> oh, am I? Tell me, pray tell, who was it exactly in which alternate universe that used grown-up Captor as a living warp drive in her spaceship for millennia? Helmsman. Hey, that wasn't me. I mean, not yet. Ugh. Alternate ways. Mm. Oh, sure, no grub sauce on your hands. Wow, you did it. Ampora, you totally changed my mind about you. Let's start making out immediately. Not. Just admit it. You have it within you to be just as harsh or a helmeted buddy as I am, if not more. Helm Chan. Man, a girl's gotta have fuel for a pimp ride, know what I'm saying? Like, I probably took care of him good. You know how it is. Someone gotta take care of the guy anyways. And, yeah. Hmm. Oh, how the rationalizations begin to flow when it suits your overinflated ego. So very typical of the kind of people who reject me. I literally everyone. At least I don't think I'm an alien. What? What are you talking about? Look at you all fronting that stupid getup. With your slicked hair and that dumb little wand in your mouth. Excuse me? It's not a Vaughn. You know perfectly well my visiting days are behind me. It's called a human cigarette, and apparently you're supposed to set it on fire. Though, if you ask me, burning it seems like a waste of a perfectly good and cool cigarette. I heard a rumor you think you're a human now. That true? It's a private matter. I don't see why I should have to talk about it with you and open myself up to more of your judgmental scorn. Sounds like another desperate cry for attention, IMO. I feel I should jump in here at this moment, Mina, before you inadvertently shame Cronus for his extremely delicate feelings of species dysphoria. No, Cankery. Man, you don't need to jump in here and defend me like this, I got it. And... I'm gone. You bros can figure out your boring feelings without me. Mina, wait! Oh man. Just like that, she's out of my life again. You had to go and fuck it up for me, didn't you? Some friends I have. Listen, I was doing you a favor. You don't need to be dating anyone who can't appreciate you for who you really are. Or more importantly, which fantasy version of yourself you most strongly identify with. Yeah, you're probably right. She doesn't appreciate me. So few of you cats do, really. Even the ones who literally identify as cats. To be honest, she might be right. Sometimes I think I might only be saying I'll be human to get attention. Maybe I should give it up. I'd be extremely disappointed to hear that if it were true. That would be such a slap in the face to all those who know themselves to be an alien while trapped in the pedestrian body of their own race. It would be unspeakably invalidating of their struggles and massively triggering to their emotions. Trigger warning. Invalidated struggles. Triggered emotions. But fortunately, I know you would never stoop as low as that. 
You understandably have doubts about your feelings and probably downplay them as a defense mechanism, since so few are prepared to recognize the legitimacy of your plight. But I am, and I just wanted you to know that I'm here for you, and prepared to lecture you extensively, I mean, listen to you extensively about your ultra-important problem. Wow. Thanks, pal. You're right. My feelings really are real. Not fake like a huge disappointing fraud that magic turned out to be. I guess the truth is, deep down I always knew I was a 1950s style human greaser. I just needed to finally be introduced to human culture to make sense of those feelings. Wonderful. I'm so happy you have found the light of truth within yourself. Now join me in tagging our discussion with righteous warnings as we consecrate your disadvantage in the holy annals of problematics. Talk to me, Tuna. Felt. I fucked up with her. Probably beyond repair this time. <laughs> laugh, laugh, laughter, laughter! I guess I'll attempt ghost suicide yet again. Of course, by which I mean tell people I did to find sympathy points. Did that work? Not really. Why don't you try it? What? With you? Yeah! Well, this is clearly absurd, but, uh, eh, what the heck? Mituna, I just can't take it anymore. I think my ghost is going to kill itself. Wow, let's fuck! Wait. Really? No, you, you, you piece of shit, idiot! Fucking garbage! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck, 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 fuck you! Oh. Be me, Tuna. Talk to Cronus. Hey, bro! Wanna hear some slab poetry I made? He just broke my skateboard and have him walk away. Be Mina. <laughs> 